All right, shutting down one side. How do we make our opponent one-handed uh, to make it easier for us to counter? Uh, this is very important when, it, when coming to counterfighting because if I'm counterfighting someone that has both hands, again, I'm guessing, I'm trying to you know, tell the future on what he's gonna throw. Instead of making him one-handed and giving him opportunities, and what I mean by that, here, I'll let you step back just for a second. So what I mean by that is if we're both level in this position, I've got both hands that can come at you. But if I can start to show shots, like this would be giving someone the left hook, okay? Because I'm outside the, the, the shoulders here. My opponent wants to throw a left hook, okay? If I'm over to the side here, my opponent's wanting to throw a right hand. So come back, back in, Justin. So if he's standing here in this position and I start to show this, he wants to bite on the left hook because I'm able to block this. I'm a little bit outside of his power there. I can, I can drop out of that right hand just a little bit. And I'm kind of setting a, a, the, the bait for a left hook. Okay? If I was over in this position here, he's, he's wanting to hit me with the right hand. Okay? So you were giving him a one-handed shot. We could also do this with movement too. So if we're standing here and I start to move this way, this way, what arm am I making him strong? So if I'm slowly moving over to the right, we'll do it slow. I'm waiting for this right hand that he's gonna throw and then I'm able to counter. So I'm giving him that, that opportunity, okay? If I'm going over this way, it's very hard to hit someone with the right hand unless he's cutting me off. He wants to go heavy with the left hand. So that's what I mean by making your opponent one-handed. Okay, don't give them two shot opportunities. It's, again, countering from here. It's either I got to do like a meat type of counter. I'm just going to throw anything as he comes. These are like setups. Like, what am I giving? How do I cause that head-on collision? Okay, if I show this left hook here, okay, he goes to throw it. Now I'm able to cause a head-on collision because I'm giving him a, a spot where to hit. I'm pulling my head out of range when I'm throwing my shot and then causing him to come into my shot. So I'm prepared, I'm seeing the hook. I could be stuffing it and blocking it, but you're giving them an opportunity so you could take advantage of them. Okay, so let's go over a couple of these. Justin, I'm gonna have you lay to the right a little bit, like you're trying to give me a right hand, okay? And when I throw this right hand at you, I'm gonna have you get me in the shoulder, okay? So this is what it looks like. He gives me the right hand and he throws. Hey, okay, again. He lays, oh, it's wonderful. And again, he lays, oh, it's beautiful. Let's slow this one down. Pause on that motion. Oh, I see the side of his jaw. I think kill shot. So when I think kill shot, I see his jaw. Go ahead and pause over there again. If he were to stay here, this is the best shot I could ever have. I'm turning my foot. I'm opening my hips. And I got just jaw to come through. Okay, so you see it and you get real hungry. Okay, so let's go do it again. You pause over to the side. He's waiting for my first motion. I open my step. He's ready to go. He's, he's off of my line right now, so he's got my back. I'm forced to use my feet, which gives him a little bit of time to see it come. Okay? You go ahead and come back over here. If you just stay in position, you don't use your feet. Okay? Go ahead and just lean to the side. So he's using his upper body for the angle to make me one-handed. It's harder to read for him because I could just boom. When he takes his foot behind me, he's waiting for that step. So he's causing me to get real aggressive with this, okay? So that's why it's better to use your feet. Doesn't mean that using my upper body to do these types of things doesn't work. But again, you're playing, you're playing with points of seconds in fighting. And if you can get one more piece to see, my foot opening, that time to see that is everything. That's how we set people up. And let's do it again. Go over here and pause. He's waiting, he waits for my foot to open and crushes, boom, and again. Okay, we'll do it a little bit more real speed now. Hey, he sets, he goes, ah, it's wonderful. You good? Yeah. Again, he steps, he goes, ah, it's wonderful. He just picks different parts of my body to hit. You good to hit me the chest? I was yeah. trying to miss, but yeah. then you put, you put your hand out there? Yeah, no, I'm, I'm, I'm blocking my body. I'm like, you can see I was trying position. to just put it there and stop it, but we'll see. Find my jaw on this one. Boom. So that, when you can cause that collision, to come through, we want to knock that handle loose. This is a great, great shot to do it. Okay, let's try the uppercut. But on this uppercut, I want kind of like a shovel shot to my jaw, okay? Because a lot of times if I see that, I'm dropping down. And the key to this one, when we're landing this shot, pause on the shot when you land it. I want your thumb upwards, okay? The key is notice the direction of where his punch is going above my shoulders, okay? So he's causing my chin to go away from my shoulders. 
if he throws downwards on me, a lot of times, even though I'm taking a good shot, you're not knocking my chin loose because of the shoulder position. So let's do it again, over the top. Watch the shoulder position. Boom, I can eat it pretty good. Oh, you're good. I got my shoulder behind me. You see how big these shoulders are? Okay, now try to thumb up, uppercut. Watch the difference. Do this slow motion. Oh, see where my head would be going? He's picking my head up and out. Very important with throwing shots. I wanna go over this detail just real quick. Okay, if he throws a left hook leveled at me, okay, I can use my shoulder for a brace. Almost like I'm holding my head in position so I'm not getting that, that whip motion. He throws level hook and I'm solid, okay? That's why these type of defenses are very strong when you can use a shoulder to really almost put your, your head in the pocket and not allow your neck out. Do it again, okay, solid. If he throws a shovel shot, okay, now my chin's coming up. So this is what I mean about knocking that chin loose. When we can set up a counter where we cause that head-on collision and that whip factor, so important to make these KO shots. Here we Centrifugal go. Typical force. That's what we're causing. That's a good word. It's the only way to put them to sleep. Say it again, because I would not be able to Centrifugal say it. Centrifugal force. Centrifugal force. You think I said it. Yeah, yeah. You, think it's, you think we're causing blunt force, but we're trying to cause things to spin. So that's, a, that's a, another great point. Concussions are caused by rotational damage and linear damage. So head here or here. In fighting. In football, you'll see a lot of just, just straight on, head to head. But most of the time is linear and rotational. So that's a great freaking point. Let's do it again, lay over to the side, come up with the hand. Oh, it's wonderful. And we're gonna do it again. And I love that. So that's key. Yeah, I hit you, hit you in your nose. Nose works. So again, he did the correct thing. When we're going in here, I talk about it all the time. Your defense is key when, when counterfighting because you're coming into the pocket and you're punching with someone. Okay, he goes off to the side there. I was gonna throw him the stray shot and he had his hand in a great position. He's seen it that he knows he's coming into that damage side. He's protecting that, okay? Very important. Okay, let's speed it up. Go ahead and put it back on my shoulder. I'll get my head out the way. That's good. Good, just give me a little bit more side. Almost like your ass is out. That, that leverage. So when he's doing this, what I was seeing before, he was here. He's only got a little bit of a line to cross, okay, if this was a straight line here. When he was here and his ass is out, now he's got all this line to cross, which causes me, let's do this underneath the, when he steps over there, my punch is now going all the way over that direction, which makes me overthrow my shot and cause more damage. Okay, and it gives him a little bit more time. I really like how you did that. Let's do it again. And go, yeah, that's good again. Good ass out and then rock your head. Top of your head. If I was to hit you with it, that, even though we're punching upwards with our thumb, your head, hardest part it's of hard your body. Punch and not see where I'm punching. Yeah. Try hey, if you catch me, it's all right. You know? to punch. I like astrology. I like to see stars. <laughs> hey, here we go. Yeah. Boom, it's wonderful. And one more. And this should be off of any punch. You notice I just threw a right uppercut there. I threw a right hook earlier. Don't worry about what they're doing. You're shutting them down. I know when he, when he's go, or when he knows when he's going that direction. I can't throw a left hand. I've got to throw this. So he's setting that up. He's making me one-handed. Okay, let's go to the other side real quick. This one I'm going to use with a little bit of footwork, okay? I like these type of steps. So when I move this way, that I like to come back with a left hand. It's very hard to counter someone if I stay in this position because he doesn't want to rush in if I'm moving to the left because I've got my jab hand there. He's coming into danger. But anytime that I start to square up, he gets comfortable. Okay, so if I'm moving to the left, I'm setting up this and I'm making him hungry to come with something and then boom, I could really drive him into my shot. So we're using our feet now to make him one-handed, okay? He wants to get front heavy with his lead hand because I'm going away and then boom, and then I'm beating it. Hand comes up, I'm shielded, I'm ready to drive in. These can work off of like a slip too. So if he's throwing a shot, I can slip and beat his left hand. Do it again, if I slip, we're racing each other. Okay, let's do it again. If I just slip, we're racing each other. Boom, okay? If I open, oh, I beat him. Okay, so I, I pulled him into my shot. Let's do that again, very slow. I have to go a lot further. I step further. out, I go here, oh, I'm waiting for it, boom. I'm able to get my hand up in front of me to defend, and most importantly, when we make them one-handed, they come to us. 
when we could bait someone into our shot, it makes our shot so much more powerful. Again, slow. I'm out. I beat it. Okay. These can work in different scenarios too. I can go past him and then catch him pulling back with the hook. So if I'm stepping not away, this direction right here, I'm pulling his leverage into me where he's falling into me. The other one, I'd be turning him. He's looking for me. Boom. So I'm getting him to go, oh, where'd you go? And look behind the shoulder. Do it on slow. I'm around the shoulder. If he wants to hook with me, I'm definitely going to beat it. So don't overthink where you need to go on these directions. I could be going back and sitting. I could be going hard off to the right, looking for the uppercut, like what Mike Tyson did a lot. Don't worry about what direction you need to go. Find what works for you. Play different modes. I can go, so right here, I can go and pivot and get my conventional stance back, or I can go southpaw and start shooting like straight shots. So again, go what's good for you. Know what your go-to moves are. If you're, left cross from a south pop position feels better than the left overhand find what works for you but play with these getting them off the shoulder and bringing them into you because when you can do this man it's so important on power okay let's see it real quick so jabbing if i want to make him one-handed on jabbing for me it's i need to get off of this side close to him when he throws a jab at me i can do this when we're racing each other for the right hands do this real quick here okay pause on your jab here, who wins? Me, because I've got you turned, okay? If I slip like this, who wins? Okay, slow it down. I'm straight on the line, who wins? Me. Boom, okay, let's do it again, I won't touch. Boom, boom, he wins. I'm on a straight line. This one will slip, I won't touch, who wins? You. Me. Okay, because I'm going off the line. Okay, so this, this to me is one of my favorite things to do off of a jab is come close because it's either he's got to run or he's going to open his hips into me and most people are not going to open their hips they're probably going to drop out of the way because they think overhand's coming okay so i come up 90 degree i get square with my feet even though i'm not squaring myself up i'm taking his back do it slow square look where i am boom off the shoulder line so when doing this i don't have to touch i can sit quick boom or I could just touch where I push him down. I get a lot more time. What am I throwing? Okay. The key on this mode is guaranteed to make him one-handed. Do it one more time. Okay. We'll pause. He's one-handed. Okay. He can only throw that. So I'm watching that. I'm visioning. I'm controlling his shoulder, not allowing him to throw that through. A one-handed fighter is so much easier than a two-handed fighter. Let's do it again. Okay. Pause. I'm in great control here, okay? I'm off the line. Whew. Okay, off the line. Notice I've got my lead hand up too. Again, if I'm playing defense, I'm really precise on knowing what's coming. I'm shielding. Okay, don't try things like this. Oh, I'm gonna throw the uppercut. Because he can faint that, that jab. If you faint the jab at me, boom. Okay, I have got to be in positions. If he faints, I'm in positions to control. Again, back to defense. Defense is so important when counterfighting. It's going to make your defense better because you're trying to set up things in the exchange. It's very easy if we play games here and I'm just offensive. Fighting's fun. Oh, I get the five shots. But he, he starts punching back. A heavy bag don't punch back. People start punching back. You've got to know your defense. The sharpest counterfighters become the best defensive fighters when needed. Yep. Well, we're talking about instances of time in this fight. I was getting my, my ass beat. By a guy, I saw him throw a lazy jab, and I was exhausted. I was like, if I don't knock him out now, I'm in trouble. This is early in my career. It's like your second, um, second pro fight. I know exactly what you're talking about. Yeah, yeah. He throws a lazy jab again. I, again, I got a split second to find in between there, or else none of this works. You see him having perfect reaction when I throw this jab. He's hitting it perfect. This has to come when I'm moving in my position. And then I can, you know, you're not just going to be like, okay, throw a jab. It's going to be a perfect jab where I'm going to get to sit out here. Sometimes that jab is not going to be, but it's going to be when you're moving perfect and everything's working and then you're going to find. So just because he's doing it in, in you know, one second, two seconds at a time, you got to work this into your routine every day. You know, moving your feet in your shadow boxing, everything. You're looking for uh, instances of time.
And that's a great point. I want to talk about this. So this fight he had taken on, on short notice. So we were not in shape. We went out and took a fight. It was hard for him to get fights at that point, And he got dead tired. It was the second round. I remember asking you too. I was like, dude, you got to do something. And he finds this mode where he was able to slip outside the jab and throw it. You actually switched your stance. He went like this. He went, yeah. he went like that. I was like, oh, God, if he does it again, I got to do it. He landed this uppercut, Ooh. which, again, the counter can change momentum in a fight. We have talked about this before. Countering is key. It's very hard to change momentum in sports. Counter fighting is the only way that you're going to change momentum is where you can set them up and stop their momentum. He brought him into the shot. The fight was over. That was a great, great fight that you have. Oh my gosh, I was nervous of that one. That was a long time ago. But counter fighting saved him. Make sure you work on your counter fighting again. Sometimes fights ain't going to go your way, but you have to be able to switch things up and it's going to help you with your defense. Zero hesitation. It's the only way to be a counter fighter.